Let me explain the anatomy of the medial ankle. The tibial nerve split into medial plantar and lateral plantar nerve at the tarsal tunnel. The medial calcaneal nerve arises from tibial nerve. Buxter nerve is the first branch of lateral plantar nerve. The next target is plantar fasciitis. I will change the needle to a 25 gauge 1.5 inch needle. I will go in a short axis in plane technique. My needle tip is located on the surface of the plantar fascia insertional area. Today, I will share a practical ultrasound intervention for plantar fasciitis after blocking the tibial nerve at the medial ankle. Let me explain my patient's position. If you check in some lectures on YouTube, you will find that many doctors prefer a patient's spine position and insert needle from anterior to posterior direction. The medial valvular area is more sensitive than thick posterior skin. So puncturing the skin in the posterior region is more acceptable for patient's comfort. You will find that minds are pretty different. I will stand on the back side of the patient and use a motorized moving table. Let the patient's pose lateral decubitus position facing the wall and cross the leg posing the medial ankle upside the operation side. I will block the tibial nerve before other processes. I don't want to spend time waiting to anesthetize the nerve. A 5 ml is enough to anesthetize the nerve. I assemble with a 26 gauge 1 inch needle. I always try to minimize the patient's pain. Shaking and eliminating air bubbles is an essential step. When it comes to block level, many doctors prefer size higher than the medial malleolus. He is tracing the tibial nerve from distal to proximal by sliding. I noticed that some doctors select the target above the tarsal tunnel in tarsal tunnel injection. Multiple insulating layers cover the axons. The nerve diameter affects the activation time of local anesthetics. The larger diameter, the more time waiting. The proximal nerve consists of a single strand and has a large diameter. The distal nerve consists of multiple smaller branches. I hate to lose time waiting and save time by selecting smaller branches. So, I always try to select the target distally. There are two advantages of the tibial nerve block. The first one is to prevent procedural pain and make the procedure comfortable. The second benefit is the chronic pain relieving effect of the local anesthetics. Let me explain the anatomy of the medial ankle. The tibial nerve split into medial plantar and lateral plantar nerve at the tarsal tunnel. There is an individual variation of a splitting point of medial and lateral plantar nerve. The medial calcaneal nerve arises from tibial nerve. Buxter nerve is the first branch of lateral plantar nerve, also known as the inferior calcaneal nerve. For ultrasound correlated understanding, I will show the surface landmark first. The malleola calcaneal line connects the center of the medial malleolus and center of the calcaneus. Heimke's triangle is the line connecting the tip of the medial malleolus, tuberosity of navicular bone, and center of the calcaneus. The division of the tibial nerve is about 16 mm proximal to the malleolar calcaneal line. 
Baxter nerve branches off 20 mm above the Maleola calcaneal line. The medial calcaneal branch originates from the tibial nerve proximal to the bifurcation. In addition to nerves, there are several tendons in the tarsal tunnel. Don't forget the posterior tibial artery and two accompanying veins. The tibial nerve is supposed to be located anterior to the nerve, but it is not always true. There are many variations between nerves and vessels. So, we must observe each structure with the ultrasound. Let's study the sonoanatomy according to the level. It is the anterior direction. The left image is the transfer scan above the medial malleolar calcaneal line. The yellow line is the superficial layer of the retinaculum. It is the deep layer of the retinaculum. The yellow circle indicates the artery and the veins. The yellow circle indicates the tibial nerve. The left image is the transfer scan at the medial malleolar calcaneal line. The yellow linear line is the superficial layer of the retinaculum. The yellow line indicates the deep layer of the retinaculum. The yellow line indicates the medial septum. These circles indicate medial and lateral plantar veins. These circles indicate medial and lateral plantar nerve. These circles indicate medial and lateral plantar artery. These circles indicate Baxter nerve and medial calcaneal nerve. Veins are easily compressible under pressure. I'll insert needle posterior to the anterior direction under ultrasound guidance. The needle echo will not be eye-catching because it is a small caliber and disturbing soft tissue echo texture. I have to focus my attention to find the needle tip. If I notice the needle tip penetrating the medial septum, it is almost there. If I push the needle tip without confirming the needle tip, I have to prepare to get a harsh complaint. Slow and steady fluid injection will infiltrate the interspace connective tissue and anesthetize the four branches. The gentle massage facilitates the spread of local anesthetics. While waiting for the work of the local anesthetics, I'll prepare solutions for the plantar fasciitis injection treatment. I draw 1.5 ml of 30 unit botulinum toxin and 0.1 ml of 0.35 mg of dexamethasone palmitate. Let me connect to a 1 inch 26 gauge needle for venous load draw. The next target is the great saphenous vein. The vein is located on the superficial fascia of the medial aspect of the tibia. It is a prominent example of a saphenous vein, but it is not always easy to draw blood on the ultrasound. The next target is plantar fasciitis. I will change the needle to a 25 gauge 1.5 inch needle. I have 30 unit of botulinum toxin, 0.35 mg of dexamethasone, and 1.5 ml of blood in my syringe. The frequent secondary infection have been reported in the plantar fasciitis injection, so I have to be highly cautious and need to clean one more. 
Let's watch the scan of the plantar fascia. It is a short axis scan image. I will go in a short axis in plane technique. I already waited enough time to activate the local anesthetics, so my patients will relax and feel comfortable. Just a moment, where is your injection target? While googling the plantar fascia injection, I have found two different injection types. The first one is the superficial injection to the plantar fascia. The second one is under the fascia. My needle tip is located on the surface of the plantar fascia insertional area. Some of the injectants are spreading into the torn plantar fascia. I retrieve the needle and redirect the needle toward the superficial side of the plantar fascia. I try to relax my hand and not press the piston hard. I can observe the fluid accumulation in the superficial and deep sides. Did you notice how much I am trying to inject with all my heart? These are main articles I referred to. Thank you for watching. See you in the following videos.